Hello everyone, welcome back. In this presentation, we are going to focus on schema diagrams. Before we step into the topic of the day, let's see an analogy. There is a popular saying in English, a picture is worth a thousand words, which means complex and multiple ideas can be easily conveyed by a single still image. This still image can convey its meaning and the organization of things more precisely than a verbal description. Let's take building construction as an example. Before any building construction, floor plans are normally created and these floor plans help us to understand its organization. Also, these plans act as a work blueprint for home planners and construction builders. If the designs are precise, then obviously the output will also be precise and perfect. Likewise, DBAs or the database designers are expected to design a clear and a concise database. So obviously they need some diagrams in order to separate entities and the relationship among entities. Also, these diagrams should contain information about the constraints that are applied on the databases. And these database designers create database schema diagrams and these schema diagrams are helpful for other users like the application programmers or analysts for proceeding the job related to databases. So we are now here in the topic schema diagrams. At first, let's see what is a schema. Database schema or simply schema is actually the logical view of the entire database. We may have a database and we want to represent the database in a logical manner. So obviously diagrams help us to convey the logical structure. So schema diagrams are for representing the database schema where these database schema is actually the logical view of the entire database. And these schema diagrams are obviously going to represent the entities like the objects that are used. An example object is the table name or the relation name. And if we say that there is a table, obviously this table will be comprised of attributes. So the schema diagram, it should not only display the table name as well as the attribute name. It should also focus on the dependencies. So in simple terms, a schema diagram should contain the database schema plus the primary key and the foreign key dependencies. And primary key and foreign key are actually examples of constraints. I hope now we know what is a schema diagram. It is actually the database schema along with the primary key and foreign key dependencies. And how we can represent the database schema and also the primary key and the foreign key dependencies. Actually, when we talk about the database schema and this schema will be actually having the relation name and the attribute name. So obviously schema diagrams will certainly have the relation name and the attribute name. Relation name means it's the table name. Attribute name means it's the column name. A table may have thousands and thousands of rows. We cannot show all the data on the diagram. It's practically not possible. But we can show what is the table name and what is the attribute name. So we now understood how we can represent the schema diagram with just the relation name and the attribute name. And we know not only schema diagram is going to have relation name and the attribute name. We should also focus on displaying the primary key dependency and the foreign key dependencies. How primary key and foreign key dependencies are shown? Attributes that are having primary key constraint or primary key dependency are actually underlined. Then what about foreign key? Foreign keys are represented using arrows. Because foreign key definitely involves two tables. One table is going to refer another table. In that case, which table is referring the other table? That can be easily shown using arrows. And do we have only these two constraints in reality in databases? The primary key and the foreign key? No, we have other constraints. Can we represent all other constraints in schema diagrams? No, other constraints are not explicitly shown in schema diagrams. And this is one of the drawbacks of having schema diagrams. Of course, we can represent the logical view of the database along with the primary key and the foreign key constraint dependencies but other constraints cannot be explicitly shown in the schema diagrams. If that's the case, do we have any alternatives for the schema diagrams? Yes, of course we do have. We have the entity relationship diagrams, simply ER diagrams, and these ER diagrams let us represent several kind of constraints. Like any other technologies, database technology is also seeing a lot of growth in the recent decades. So obviously many database systems provide design tools with a graphical user interface, simply a GUI interface 
for creating schema diagrams. In chapter one, we have seen a lot of database softwares and most of the softwares provide a design tool which is embedded with a graphical user interface in order to create schema diagrams. So whatever we have seen so far is just the theoretical aspects. We need to see the schema diagram, right? In chapter one and chapter two, which database we have taken as an example? The university database, right? In this university database, we have a lot of relations and we also do maintain the relationship among relations in the relation itself. Let's say how the relationship is maintained. The instructor is actually belonging to a department, right? So instructor will also have a department name and department relation will also have the same attribute, the department name and how an instructor and a section relation is linked. The instructor is going to teach to that particular section and this section is going to contain some students, right? So instructor is going to deal with this section with this relationship teachers. And what about student? Student is going to be related with this course relation. How? With the takes relationship because student takes this course, right? There will be advisor relationship also, right? So advisor is the relationship that links two tables. What are these two tables? the student and the instructor table. So this advisor table will contain an attribute from the student table and an attribute from the instructor table. What attribute? The ID attribute from student and the instructor table. Just pause this video for a while and just think about the relationship that are established among the relations. If the schema is represented like this, it's very vague, but schema diagrams help us to represent the logical view. Let's see the schema diagram example now for the same university database. So here is the schema diagram for the same university database. And if you see all the relations, whatever we have seen in the previous slide, the student relation, the course relation, the department relation, the instructor relation, all these are relations what we have seen in the previous slide. But how the previous slide and this slide differs? In the previous slide, we represented everything as a word. But here we are representing all the relation in a diagram and what this diagram is containing important three things. One is the relation name or the table name. In this case, the table name is student and what are all the attributes or column names that this relation contain the student ID, the student name, the department name and the total credits earned by the student. Let's take the same student table, the student ID or simply ID name, department name and total credits four attributes. The same is represented here student ID name department name and total credits and can you see one of the attributes is different from other attributes. Yes, ID is underlined. What do we mean by this? It means this is a primary key attribute and that's why I told you the primary key attributes are shown with an underline. So here ID is underlined. So obviously ID attribute is a primary key attribute. Just pause this video for a while and think about the other primary key attributes in the schema diagram. I hope you are done. So whatever is underlined, all these are primary key attributes. And coming to the arrow, can you see here? This is student relation and this is instructor relation. And this instructor relation also has ID, name, department name and salary. So these four information or four attributes are belonging to the relation instructor. How this instructor relation and student relation are linked? Every student is assigned to an instructor with the advisor relationship. I have already explained this in the previous lecture. So student and instructor are related with this advisor relationship. And what are all the two important attributes this advisor relationship should contain? It should contain this ID that I am representing it as student ID. But why I am representing as student ID is that if I simply take ID here and if I simply take ID here, this relation has two column names with the same name ID ID, but we don't know what ID it is, whether it is a student ID or instructor ID. So I am representing it as S underscore ID, which means this is student ID, which is this ID and also I underscore ID represent that it is instructor ID, which is this ID. So this is how relationship are maintained. Let's see how the instructor and section relationship are maintained. Here is the instructor relation and where is the section relation? Here is the section relation and how the instructor and section relation are linked. An instructor will be teaching to that particular section, right? So instructor teaches this particular section and this section will be in a classroom, right? So this section is having a classroom and this classroom will be in a particular building, the room number 
and the capacity of that particular classroom. And student takes course, right? So where is the student relation? Here. So here is the student relation. Here is the course relation and student takes this course. Can you see here? This takes relationship is there with the student. We have seen underlined represent actually the primary key. And can you see the foreign key constraint? Just see this example, the student relation and the department relation. In the student relation, we have an attribute called department name. And in the department relation, we have an attribute called department name. And this is the foreign table. And this foreign table contains department name as the primary key attribute. And this primary key attribute in the department table is actually linked to the student table. And this student table here, it is not a primary key attribute. Because in the student relation, there may be multiple students belonging to the same department. Whereas in the department table, we need to have the department entry only once. And that is why this department name in the department table is having only one entry. And that is why this department name is a primary key attribute here. And the foreign key representation here is the student table is referring to which table? The department table. That's why the arrow is like this. Can you see student table is referring the department table. So whenever any entry is made in the student relation, the department name will be validated or the referential integrity is validated by referring to this table. Suppose if we are entering a department name here, this department name should exist in this table. So I hope now you understood the significance of having schema diagrams in databases. And that's for the day. In this presentation, we have focused on the schema diagrams and the significance of having schema diagrams. But the drawback is, in this schema diagram, we can represent the relation name, the attribute name, along with the primary key and foreign key constraints. Can you see here only primary key, the underline, and the foreign key, the arrows can be represented. And we are not able to represent other constraints. And this drawback is overcome in which diagram? The entity relationship diagram, the ER diagram. We are going to focus on ER diagrams in the next chapter. And I have not explained the relationship between the section relation and the time slot relation, the section relation and the course relation, and the relationship between the course relation and the prerequisite relation. This is the homework for you. Just pause this video for a while and just think how the relationship is established in the entire schema diagram. I hope the session is informative and thank you for watching.